Hey guys, it's Shoshi from Shoshi's Minis and we're live and it is Friday. That means it's Whip Friday. Get your pictures ready, yay. Nixie Minis, the Seraphine, Rumble, hello, sneaky tiny small. Love you guys, yay. So I need some help. I am trying to find an artist. I think it's from uh, the period of Art Nouveau, but I'm not 100% sure if you guys know much about art history. So the artist I'm looking for did a lot of art very similar to this piece. And I want to say, like I said, it's an Art Nouveau. It might be later. It's around that time. Good afternoon. Good evening. Hello, everybody. Cool, you were shared on the KDM. I know. I was really excited about that. I didn't want to. I think I mentioned it a little bit before. Um, I think on my on my uh, subscriber stream, but I didn't want to say too much until it actually happened because I didn't know when it was going to happen. So anyway, this particular artist, and I cannot remember his name, did a lot of like fancy like clouds. There used there would be like these women kind of laying or standing with like lots of um, 
lots of like Greek kind of uh, looks. And I want to think, I think it might be, gosh, I wish I could find out what artist this was, but I remember seeing it. it I remember these, this artist was really popular in the 80s and 90s, maybe 80s. And people would do posters of this artist on their bedroom walls and stuff like with, I want to say there were tigers and there were Greek columns and like lots of flowing cloth. Does anybody remember? Sir, Alf, Mucha, yes, yes. I think that might be it. Penny Cricks, you were amazing. All right, I'm gonna, I think that's it. I think it's Mucha. I don't know if I'm pronouncing right. Mucha, Mucha. Let me look. Let me see. I think that's it. He was a Czech painter, so it probably wasn't Mucha, probably Mucha. Living in Paris during the Art Nouveau period, distinctly known for class, uh, stylized and decorative theatrical posters. I think that might be it. Or at least somebody who was inspired by Mucha. Let me, let me do the image search and see what I'm finding. I think this is it. Pretty dang close. This, no, it's not it, but it is whoever, whoever, very similar to this. Which is really close and probably close enough, actually. You know what? I lied. I might be him. Because look at this, look at this piece here. This is kind of similar to what I'm talking about. It's really similar. One of your favorite artists. Yeah, I really love Art Nouveau, Art, Art Deco. So what I'm looking for here, this isn't exactly the style, but whoever whoever was into this art form, yeah, it's really similar to his stuff. But look at this, look at this. I'm looking for a palette for this model. This is what we're gonna be painting today. And when I looked up the, the, the inspiration for this model is Leda and the Swan. She's a Greek figure in uh, in Greek mythology and she ended up doing it with the swan who was Zeus at the time and um, I didn't want to copy off the box art but I wanted a palette that would be really oh you want some chill EDM already all right let's go for it we can go for it give me a second mark and I'll pull that up but yeah so I'm I'm the first thing I need to do is come up with a palette and I was going to look up some art historians to see because I really, you guys know, I'm like, I'm not trying to make up things from scratch. I'm not trying to like break the mold. If I try to come up with my own palette on my own, who knows what I'm going to get. So what I do is I'll look up another, <laughs> I'll look up another artist like this and I'll pick out the colors in a painting rather than make up, because you already know that that painting is gonna, gonna work, right? Rosetta's not who I'm thinking of. He did great stuff, but he's not right for this model because I'm looking for pastel, flowy, light, air. She's the air. Alex Kingle, thank you for subscribing. Yeah, and I believe like Boris Vallejo is dark and heavy. That's kind of how he feels to me. But he is, a, he is absolutely a master. 100% a master and and should be regarded as such as well unfortunately on hey clap traps I'm missing some things Minnie has always screamed Meg from Heracles type of palette let me look look let me look that up Meg from Heracles palette <laughs> oh i think you're talking about oh you're talking about the the cartoon character <laughs> that's a bit that's adorable um yeah no i could see that it's it's a little maybe maybe i i don't know you know i could see that look at this this could work I could see that working with her. You just got back from picking up a bunch of grocery stuff. It was an adventure, I bet. Any other ideas for palette? Let's, I'm gonna look 
at um, Mucha is really close, but it's it's whoever it was somebody else. And there was a particular period of art where th this kind of style was really popular and everyone was doing these like clouds and this kind of Greek look. I'm just going to look up clouds, Greek art and see what I can find. Images. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to find it while I'm on the stream. We might just have to roll with things. So let me show you some of the works from Glida and the Swan, because the palettes for almost all of the the um, the works are very like complementary, orangish and blue and bluish. Glida and the Swan. Okay. Look at this. You've got orange and blues, blues, a little bit of orange. Yeah, this is a horny swan. Orange and blue, orange and blue, orange and blue. It it works, but I don't know if I want, it all feels a little heavy and I really want that light. However, I'm noticing, especially with like this one, having that darkness all around really frames the figure nice. So we might actually do something like that with dark hair, and maybe some darker clouds and then have this horny swan up on her, you know? Let me check painting cricks. Let me see. Echo Schernick. Let me see. Yeah, that's gorgeous. Oh my God. You know what? I love that palette too. That's a beautiful palette. So that's, that's got, yeah, not, you know what? That works for me because it's got some beautiful golds and purp a little purple, but a little blue, and the blue is contrasting with the... Okay, that, that could work. And then having the blonde hair. All right, I'm going to print that out because that works really well. Even if I don't find what I'm really looking for, then I can go ahead and... Uh... By the way, that was a, kind of a not safe work, not safe for work link, so... Anybody looking at that, be, beware. <laughs> I just forgot to say that. There's boobies. So I'm going to print this out. Okay. So all I'm looking for is a palette. I don't really, the imagery itself is not as important. So that actually works. I don't like that. No problems. Yeah, <laughs> it's no problem. Will Cotton. Yeah, let me look. Let me look at Will Cotton. Let's see what that looks like. I really love crowdsourcing with you guys and looking, you know, for red, because you guys come up with some really awesome ideas for me. Yeah, wait, that's pretty close too. That's very fluffy and lots of pinks and it's really pretty. I like that. It's, it's not what I had in mind, but it again, it is very close. I like the pinups in the clouds. Again, if you're looking for Will Cotton, he's a little, little NSF too. It's a dark palette. Oh, Seraphim, you're gonna have to send that, if it's not safe for work, send it to Pain and Cricks and he can let me know. He can send it. Well, don't post it if it's not safe for work because I don't know, you know. Yeah, I'm thinking light and airy. And I think this Will Cotton, and this link that Painting Critics sent me might work a little best. I'm gonna go get the image and then censor it and then we can we can look at it together. I'll be right back. So you know, yeah. I'm gonna get the printer working. again. Ah. Hold on. Nice. Echo Chernick. That's not that I want to print that. Open image in a new tab. There. Perfect. 
Sometimes my printer has a mind of its own and it will sit there. There it goes. Okay, good. All right, now I'm going to be right back. All right, I have, I have it all set. We can look at this. This color palette is very pretty. It's obviously a little bit brighter on my monitor, but I'm going to show you how it looks here. I've got too many tabs open. So some of these, so we don't lose frames. All right, take a look at this. And this is what I censored her, so we could all look at her on Twitch. But I love these. Um, so we've got some, we've got some browns and the the light orangey colors, and then we've got this kind of golden pastel yellow, and then this blues, a little bit of greens, and and then a little pink. Not a not a lot, but this is a very very limited palette. But I think it could work for this really limited let's just put these let's just put these colors on let's just put these colors on the palette and see what happens let's see if we can match those pretty well what's nice is if you have like a Photoshop or something you can actually use a color picking tool hey Ravage how you doing take out all the pesky yeah nipples exactly <laughs> The Will Cotton pictures are really lovely too. Um, I I might borrow some of the pinks from his. Like I'm gonna cover. Let me see if I can cover this with my phone. I'm covering her. She's got she's naked, but look at that beautiful pinks. I might throw that. I think because there is pink in this palette. It's just not a lot, but I could easily. This goes well with that very very well. And I think having pinks in those clouds. Because here's the thing, when you're painting white, it's never white. It's always got colors in it when you're painting it, okay? So start with colors and then white is like your final highlight. Hi, Indie Cross Painter, how are you? Welcome. All right, let's, let's just start pulling out colors and putting it on the palette and making, making the palette, right? And then we'll see what we can do. Hi, Teveston. Yeah, he does a lot of stuff with cotton candy and boobies. <laughs> I love it. Who doesn't love that, you know? <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so by the way, we got, I want to show you guys, we got a whole bunch of new paints from, from um, Creature Caster, and they, a lot of them are pastels, so I'm very excited, and especially since this project might have them. So let me just take a second, if it's okay with you guys, before we start painting, I'm gonna show off these new colors and announce that these are gonna be my subscriber giveaway for the 16th. We also have a giveaway today. And we should show that first. We're gonna do the giveaway. Yeah, new stuffage, always, always. Okay, so I've got three models, one that, I will, one that I'll paint and then we'll We'll auction it or something. We'll we'll sell it because I'm not interested in keeping it, but I do. I'm interested in painting it. And two models that will be giveaways. One of one is going to get given away today, right? To one of my followers. So all you have to do is be a follower. And then let's see, let's just look and see. Hold on. Here we go. All right. Let's take a look at these three boxes. So the first one, that one we'll show, that one we'll share last, because that's the one I'm going to paint. We've got Lord of Slaughter and Lord of Malice. They don't, they don't really look like much outside the box, but I'm going to be giving away. If somebody wants, if one of my mods wants to go to Creature Caster and grab, grab the link to Lord of Malice. I think we're going to give him away today. No, not the Lord of Malice. What about the Lord of Slaughter? 
Figgy. She's like, no, not the Lord of Malice. I have an app on my phone that uses your camera. Yeah, I have one of those too. Oh, it matches it to acrylic. What what app is that? Is that you want you want, oh you wanted it? You've wanted this for years? Oh. Well we're giving it away today, sneaky. So okay, but anyway, so here's here's the torso. He's got I don't know if he's got two sets of wings or you get a pick or he actually has two sets on him. Look at the back, that probably would tell us. Okay, so it looks, oh, he had, she just has one set of wings. I like. There we go, thank you. Uh, Sneaky just posted the link to this model, so you can go take a look at what he, what he looks like. Actually, I will go there, and I will show you guys with my whip trip setting. Oh yeah, he is a badass. Okay, hold on, I'm gonna show that to you there that to everybody I can click on it or okay let's let's show you guys what this what this this is what the model looks like there we go he looks like that and he has a couple different weapon choices so you can choose hold on let's go through the photos this is our giveaway for today guys so you can choose the axe or you can choose the sword. He's kind of got that cool face in the back. Here's what he looks like unpainted. Whoops, sorry about all that. There's like, here's how big he is compared to a space marine. Little pieces, and then come with all those pieces. Like I said, you get a choice of weapons, ax or sword, the ax. <laughs> sword. All right, so that's Lord of Malice. Normally he's $79. We're giving it away to our followers today. Hi, unexpected hello. It's big compared to Space Marine. I think, I think he's about this big, maybe? I mean, he's not huge, huge. He's not as big as some of these creature caster models, but he's probably, probably about that big. Here's my face, probably about that big. Mark Goodwin, hello. Balacor, it's a Balacor model. Oh, holy. <laughs> Seraphine's like, holy. <laughs> my, my sensor just got you. Is My mic is acting up. Hold on, let me fix it. It always does this. I have a bad mic, guys. I'm sorry. I'll fix it. Hold on. I'm going to unplug it and plug it back in. There, is that better? Maybe that's better. You're gonna have to pass because you gotta sleep soon. Yeah, you do need to be present for this one because it's a follower giveaway. I need you have to be present when we do the uh, when we do the drawing. Otherwise, I can't track you down. Is it? Is it is a Doug Meadle night shirt? Yay, Kingdom Death. In fact, for those of you guys who don't know, check Instagram. On my stories at Shoshi's Minis, I was featured by Kingdom Death today. I'm so excited because I, you guys know I'm such a big fangirl. Yeah, you censored yourself. Okay, good. <laughs> so let's, we're gonna give away uh, this um, Lord of Malice. And like, uh, I think it was Rumble that said it's like a Balacor. He is a chunk boy. Yes, he is. Actually, uh, Ravage, the, the, the Lord of the Lord of the Plague was, I can't remember which one I sent you, but the one I sent you is actually bigger than this one. This one's not so big. Let me show you the next model. This is the one we're gonna give away today though, the Lord of Malice. Sounds fine? Okay, good. Plague Angel, yeah, the Plague Angel is, is big. He's a big boy. All right, the Lord of Slaughter is next. If somebody wants to pull that one up, let me see if I can pull that up myself real quick since I'm already on the Creature Caster page. Slaughter, bear with me.
There he is. All right, I'm going to show you guys. This is the Lord of Slaughter. He's going to be given away another time. I'm not sure when yet. Maybe next month. And this, this model is also very cool. Hold on a second. Here he is. The Lord of Slaughter. His base is really cool. He's got like all these skulls on it and everything. He's got... I think he's the one that has a couple different um, sets of wings. Yeah, there's one of his sets of wings. There's alternate heads. A lot of these uh, creatures have alternate heads. Got some kind of weird arm knife. What that is, because he's got two arm knives. And this is how big he is compared to a um, Space Marine. So he's about five and a half inches tall, which is about 13 and a half millimeters. Is that right? That's right. Okay, so that tells you how big he is. This will, this will be a future giveaway, okay? It's fun. It comes with an alternate head and weapons with or without wings. I see, cool, yeah. Got one more model. The third model is the twins. You guys might have seen this on the Creature Caster website before or on their social media. This one is the one I'll be painting and auctioning. So save your dollars. If you want it? These Jamaican tunes are jamming. Are they Jamaican? I don't know. I can't. I can't hear what we're listening to. Hold on. Let me try. Missed it. Oh, well. <laughs> All right, so the twins, I'm not gonna get this model out because there are so many pieces. It's gonna be better to just show you on the website. So I'll show you. This is, hold on one second. And I don't really, I think the twins are, so they're called Suzerain of Desire twins. So they are the Lady uh, Lady Pride and Lord Lust. Interesting little story. Oh, and it's out of stock currently. Okay, let's show you guys what this looks like. We're gonna be excited about. Like I said, I'm gonna sell. I'm gonna paint this on stream at some point and sell it. Here they are. They're entwined and they're like supposed to be siblings. It's a weird situation. There we go. That's a beautiful picture. It's just a, it's a beautiful sculpt, even though it's twisted and weird. There we go, there's the back. They've got these cloak things. It comes with two faces. The, the man has like a bestial face and a sexy face. And I'm probably gonna do the sexy face because that's cool. He's got alternate different weapons. And there's the, they have some kind of teeth on their bodies and they're sort of entwined, like I said. The base is really cool. It's very almost Kingdom Death like. Here we go. Here's the bestial face. Also really cool looking. Here's an alternate weapon. I I like this weapon a lot. And then this is the size. That's not a. I don't think that's a. Well, maybe it was Space Marine size. This is a very big model. So it's about six feet tall total. Or sorry, six inches tall. Six feet would be bigger than me. And then it's got a million little bitty pieces. And so I might have to write to them to ask about how to put this together. That's going to be a whole stream, putting it together on its own. So anyway, I'm excited about that. I think it'll be really fun to paint on stream here. And we'll auction that off for our followers or our probably subscribers. It'll probably be subscribers. It is odd, isn't it? You would totally watch me paint a six foot model. I just need, I need a, like a bigger airbrush, probably. Hi, Frank Dino. Mir geht's gut. And now I know why you marked this mature. Yes. Yeah, I always mark all my streams mature anyway, just because of this. I mean. You just never know. We've, we're painting Lita and Swan, and she's all not safe for work. Are you ready to see some paints? I know we're not getting straight to painting. People on YouTube always complain 
They're like, painting is at two hours and three minutes. <laughs> like, but we have fun. One of the things about streaming is you get to do what you want. All right, so these are some of the new colors. I got pale yellow. That's definitely a color that we'll probably end up using a little bit in this palette. Um, although I do have to say that the, the yellows in here are not as intense. They're more de desaturated. This is called gray blue. And it's definitely in this palette. We'll put this on the palette. We'll put this on, on here. Put a little bit of that on there. Um, this is dark golden brown, and it's probably the closest thing that Cohecha Castro has put out to an ochre. And if you look, it's it's in the same family. See, there's some of that brown in there, right there. When you desaturate this out, maybe with this pale yellow, you'll get some of this this golden color right here. Adding is cool. Good. Hey, Foxy Fire, Fox Fire, how are you? Kibitz some more. Exactly. We like to kibitz. That's what we're, our channel is. We're the kibitzers. <laughs> I'm gonna put. I need to. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna put that on here after the fact. I'm gonna do this in a color wheel style model so we're gonna oh i just got paint on myself already so there's some turquoise this is another new color that's absolutely in here as well there's some light greens and things this is a lot more saturated than these turquoises but we can again and again change that out that on there and then this color is in here but not as much right here and over here and over here this is a new color, bright pale green. And I'm gonna put that on. I think I have that. Doing well. Yeah, you like these colors, aren't they pretty? Forgot to open this one. Oh, no, it is open. Huh, why isn't it coming out? Try it again. There we go. Oh, this is such a gorgeous palette already. Bright pale. The reason why it's called bright is because it's intense. And so if you look at if you look at this, that it's so intense that it's blitzing out a little bit on my on my monitor. All right, so that's three that's three colors from the new line. We've got a total of five colors, ten colors total. Um, faded plum. That I don't see that on here. Not really. So, but I will show it to you. There, there's the color. That's gonna probably not be on this palette. This might be. This one is dark camo. Oh wait, dark camo green is not the new one. Where's the new one? Did I already put it on my palette here? Hold on. Here it is. Dark camo green isn't the new one. The new one is black green. And I do believe there is definitely some black green in this. So we'll go ahead and put this on the palette. You just got your paints from, from Creature Caster? Yes, and this is a really pretty dark. It's different than the dark camo green. I'm going to show you how. We showed this off on the on the subscriber stream yesterday. The um, there's just a slight. Look at the difference. One has got it's more pigmented, right? This is a little bit more desaturated. It's almost like there's a little bit more white in it. So this is going to be great for like dark lining and things like that. Just a little bit different. Hi, Millennia. How are you? That was a bit of paint there. Yeah, exactly. All right, so that's one of the new colors. I put a little bit of that on there. I don't think I'm going to use too much. Um, oh, and I love this color. Definitely be using this color because look, it's all in here in the browns. Burnt Sienna. So one of the things I've been asking Creature Caster to put out, I said, I need something like my P3 Bloodstone, and they did. There is a really cool difference. You can make your own Burnt Sienna um, if you don't have it with the Burnt Orange and mix a little bit of mahogany with it. But if you don't like mixing and you don't want to waste those paints, get the Burnt Sienna. And then I'm going to show you the difference between the Bloodstone and the burnt sienna 
Now the other thing is Bloodstone is a satin paint because all P3 paints are satin. So you can see pretty light and pretty orangey. You totally burn it. <laughs> no one knows how to cook sienna anymore. They always burn it. Yeah, or, or they have it raw, right? Raw sienna. One day you'll be buy these paints, but in 2020 you swore off buying paints. All right, and there is there is burnt sienna, and it's got a lot more. Again, it's just like the the um, the black green. It's got more pigmentation in it, and it's going to dry matte. So I really like the fact that that creature caster came out with the sienna. And I'm going to definitely put that on the palette, on the other side of the palette, though. There we go. Okay. Keep those over here. I'm going to put, I'm going to put a little bit of this dark golden brown. This is, they're, they're, um, it's like a dark yellow ochre. Or it's like a, it's, what's the other one? It's, it's similar to uh, raw umber. Actually, yeah, that's more of a raw umber. Raw umber or raw sienna. Actually, that could be raw sienna because raw sienna has a lot of yellow in it. I'm going to put that over here. I'm going to need to fade those out with some pastel color. Okay. That one's a new color. And then last but not least, I think this is the last of the new colors, is blue-black. And that's also, I believe, in this in different spots. Blue-black. We're going to put that on here over in the blues. Yeah. Like a dark, like a dark blue-gray. I would say this is probably comparable to, what's that, Space Wolf Gray? What color is that Space Wolf Gray that's got a little blue in it? Ah, uh, no problem, RJ Bauer, how well are you? Am I painting a mini or a lithophane? Yeah, I'm painting this bust right here. I'm just laying out the, pa the palette for her. And we decided that this, where well, I'm getting paint all over myself, hold on. Before I get it on the model. Ah, no. Okay, I did not drop her in the palette. Thank God. <laughs> the fang. <laughs> the fang. Yeah, the fang. Exactly. All right. So put that over here. Also, I'm putting all my colors in a row here. We're using almost all of the new colors except for this purple. Remember how we talked about adding some of these cotton candy pinks and things. So I might actually put a little bit of this purple on here. Just a little bit. I got to open it more. Here we go. Yay, Foxy Fire, thank you for the follow. Let's do this giveaway now. So all my followers can enter this giveaway. I'm going to set this up in just a second here. We're going to give away the Lord of... Slaughter, the Lord of Slaughter from Creature Caster. Right. Now, oh, you're right. But that's, yeah, there is a splotch. Dang it. Uh, we'll just go over it with the white, with the white, uh, hmm. Let me see if I can get it off at all. It might not be cured. Yes. I'm able to scrub it up a little bit. All right, that'll become shadow for that part of her model. All right. Thank you, Argy Bauer. Yes, yeah, she is a beautiful model. Let's look at her again. This is called The Air, and it's from Nocturna Models. And we're going to be working on her today. We have we had another subscriber, didn't we? No. Miss Creative just followed, and I missed that. Ferizian Gray might be the one I'm thinking of. You're right, Mark. I think it's Ferizian Gray. All right, let's get this. Let's get this uh, giveaway going. Okay, I'm gonna set this up so we can all be part. It's our monthly follower giveaway. All you have to do to be eligible is be willing to give me your info if you win, so that I can ship this to you. 
Um, shipping has already been paid. We don't need to worry about that. I can pretty much ship to anywhere. Go. Okay. Custom. Monthly. Follower giveaway. Here we go. Edit. One winner will be chosen to win a creature caster. Run. I'm going to write this. Oh, I have to spell one right. This. I always have typos in these giveaways. One winner will be chosen to win a creature caster or a Lord of Slaughter model. Hold on. There we go. And we'll do we'll do the duration for this giveaway. Um it's already three o'clock. So let's do this for an hour and a half. We'll give everybody an hour and a half. And remember, you have to be present to win. So is that going to put you Europeans up too late? Is that going to be okay? Worth it. Okay, got it. Can I spend 1087k chat points to win it outright? No, you cannot, because there's no points needed. It's a follower giveaway. It'll be 10.30, is that too late? 9 p.m., okay, I'm gonna do it. We'll do an hour and a half. All right, it's ready. There you go. One winner will be chosen to win a Creature Caster, a Lord of Slaughter model. Must be present to win. The raffle is started for viewers to use exclamation point raffle enter the raffle so 10 30 in europe it looks like and nine something in the uk is when we're going to finish the raffle up okay looks like everybody's entering don't forget if you want a better chance of winning be a subscriber because subscribers get two tickets subscribers get two tickets and followers get one i know it's not fair but subscribers are awesome <laughs> It's Friday night and we're all in quarantine. Not like we have things to do. That's true. It's we can stay up late and win things, win valuable prizes. Okay, you can run to the store. If you are a subscriber and you win, I will go ahead and track you down. If you're you have to be a you have to be present to win if you're a follower, for sure. All right, good luck everybody. Good luck. I'm going to take a drink of my beverage real quick and then we're gonna really start painting for real like after we get this palette done <laughs> all right I want you to look at this palette and tell me what what it all has on here that look at this it's very cool palette right these are all these cool colors cool 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 even the this is warm this one is cool this is a cool, cool brownish yellow. Um, let's let's add some more. So this means we need to add cool ivories, right? This is a warmish ivory. Yeah, I'm gonna put both of these on the palette. Olive flesh and ivory. I'm gonna go on here. Yeah. I'm gonna put a lot of that one on there. And then this, olive flesh. There we go. It's, it's, you can't tell the difference very well, but you, there is a little bit more something in this one. And that one is a little bit brighter. Hard to see. 90 is so late. Oh, I'm sorry, Millennia. It's Friday night. Where you gotta go tomorrow? <laughs> it's late it is late I'm always this late though this is what my stream times are <laughs> you got 
All right, and then I've got one more color. This is bright ivory. I'm definitely gonna put this on here. This is a really bright ivory. You can absolutely see the difference in how that one is so bright. Did you get a ticket? Minute Maid Models, let me check. Try it again, just do exclamation, exclamation point raffle and it'll let you know if you receive tickets. You can never sleep behind, beyond 8 a.m. No matter how hard you try. Oh, I understand. Very pastel looking, the left side of the palette. I agree, it is. So we're gonna need a few more darker colors. Um, I think I need another green, maybe, no? Um, I need us. I need that sienna. No, I got the sienna. Let me look at this again. We need the pinks. That's what I'm missing. So, unfortunately, Creature Caster only has one pink, and it does not jive with this palette. Look at this. But you can make it jive. I'm going to show you. If you have a color that doesn't go with the colors on your palette, look, see how it doesn't go. All you have to do is mix it with the stuff on your palette and just don't use it straight and then you'll have a cohesive palette so let's let's do a little bit of that let's mix let me use this brush i'm going to mix this and this purple see if i can yeah just tint that a little bit that way take a little bit of this ivory also, if you desaturate things out, then you can always see now it kind of goes. Much better. Let's take some bright ivory. Much better. And we do need yellow on this. That's what I was missing. I don't have my ochre and my golden yellow. This We need both of these colors on here. Yep. I'm going to put these over here on the warm side. Here's the ochre, yellow ochre on this side of the... It, mm, maybe. It's, it's gonna need mixing. That, I want you to see the difference between these two is this goes with it because there's white in it. That is a little bit saturated, but if I mix it over here with some of, there's my skin tone. Add a little bit of ivory and there's my skin tone. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. That's how we're going to do that. Okay. Add a little bit more ivory. And you can get a range. Add a little tiny bit of pink over here. More ivory. Do a lot. Okay. Grab the pale yellow. Yeah, I think you're right, Claptraps. I definitely think that's that's on here, even though it, it's a little brighter than I would probably normally use. Yeah, that's a cold yellow. I want you to see this. This is a cold, you can't quite see it. It's a cold yellow, even though you can't see it. This is a warm yellow. That's a cold yellow. These three colors right here are all warm, and then everything else is cold. Everything else is cold. And you know me, like I don't normally use cold palettes, but it's gonna be a good experiment. Now notice that I did not use my flesh colors because they are warm. If I want a cold skin tone, I'm gonna have to mix it out of all this. All right. And I think I'm, I, can't decide if I'm going to use the airbrush right now or not. I'm thinking no. I'm thinking I need to mask things first. All right, let's just start. Let's just start. Where's my Where's that brush I was mixing with? You have to feed the cats, no problem. Pale pink. Oh, yes. Thank you. Who said that? Joras, you were right. This is a cold. A cold pink. It's also a good one. And there's a little bit of that in the wings and stuff. Very nice. All right, that's perfect. Awesome. 
pale, I forgot about pale pink. Do it all brush old school? Maybe, maybe. The problem with old school is gonna take forever. And this is a commission, which means it can't take forever. So we can airbrush some of this. Um, but I think for the skin, I do want to paint that, paint that in. Um, let's, and we're gonna use this as our, as our model here. So that means I need to start with some of my siennas. So let's find a soft, flat brush. Like it'll work. I need to invest in some higher quality flat brushes probably. All right, I'm gonna take this sienna color and a little bit of this brown. Need to mix just the right. I know what I need, a little green in there. I know that sounds weird, but that'll make a brown. Green and red make a brown. That, that might work. And I'm gonna put this into darker areas, dark, so I can get my shadows blocking in this color right now it's gonna seem weird at first you will see and what I'm gonna do is feather out the hard lines with the water okay, just like a watercolor technique go ahead and Use the white of use the white of the uh, primer as our canvas. Need to make sure that this darkness is in in there first. This is grisaille. This is a a technique called grisaille, where you're glazing over the white that's already underpainted. Just using thin amounts. I want to feather out those brush strokes. I don't really want those brush strokes in there. What's good about doing this blocking, this color blocking right now, is that it's thin enough that if I want to come over and airbrush later at some point, I can. I'm not going to hurt it. Happy Friday, Kapaka! And the doctor smiled, friend. <laughs> exactly. Do you still use that watercolor brush with the dyeing drawing? Yeah, I do. Well, I mean, I haven't used it in this technique yet, pun expected, um, and I still do use it, but uh, I mean, here, is this it? Nope, that's not it. I had it, I had it on my table and I just don't know where I put it. Sometimes I, I don't use techniques because I don't have the tool next to me. Okay, I'm gonna go through here, carefully cover her face. I need to make sure that there's no... Got a little something on her nose.
And I got some on her crown, but that's okay because the crown's gonna be probably, ooh, the crown's gonna be turquoise. I think. All right. Going back in, smooth out all of my little brush strokes that I had in there. Need more right there. We'll go ahead and brush some of that paint off real quick. You just need to make sure that darkness is in the shadows first. Hello darkness, my old friend. Don't know the lyrics. So using the the underpainting of the uh of the model of the primer to help me figure out where stuff is all right so now we already know where our lights are because of the primer right okay next i think i'm gonna work on full skin tone as we have the primer that did a lot of the work for us. I'm gonna get, a, this is one of those new brushes. Um, actually, it's not new. It's Monument Bombwick Brushes Igniter. I decided to give these another try because I'd heard that they reformulated them. They had sent me some of these to try early in the proto, pr prototype stages and they weren't quite for me because they weren't springy enough, but they've, they've changed them and I, I kind of like them. And so I might end up using these more and more. All right, I'm going to add some ivory to my base color and start painting in my little highlights here. Ooh, see, now this is a very opaque color, this ivory, now that I've added white to it. So I'm glazing it softly, right? I don't want to jump in with the chalky highlight. Might have it be chalky anyway, we'll see. But I am I like to paint skin in layers, as you know. Feather that, feather that shadow. I can go back in with the shadow color and blend it, wet blend it in. Better. The Citadel closed their shop. Uh, Inequity Graphics, where, what country are you in? Because I might be able to help you with some ideas, but if you're in the UK, maybe some of my audience will be able to help you. All right, so see, we're wet blending. Wet blend that base color in there. Now, pro acrylics are matte, and I find matte, we might need a little medium for this because this is a skin tone, and medium is really useful for keeping things from drying too quickly and getting too chalky. I'm gonna add a little bit of medium to this. Oop, that's too much yellow. And this will also give it a little bit more of a satin. It's going to be a little streaky on me because I put too much medium in it. It'll glaze and it'll hopefully not lay on top as much. As far as laying on top. But 
better. Yeah. I like satin paints for skin because guess what? Skin isn't matte. And I don't like it when skin has a matte kind of look and looks really flat. I like it to be, I'm, I'm a realism painter, so I like it to be a little bit of, I'm gonna just throw a ton of, a tiny bit of green in here. Okay. Desaturate that. We'll end up going over that later, but look at how that already kind of shifted it. Okay, why do you use green? Because in the in the Renaissance and in the uh, fresco paintings from the Renaissance, people used green in a Verdaccio. That already looks cool and nice. Starting to look more realistic. Hmm. See how I'm feathering back and forth? I paint skin like this. I like the blend in this feathering motion. So it's like, it's like this. Let me see if I can use a dark color so you can see what I'm talking about. So this is how I'm feathering it. Right? And then when I want to blend another color over it or into it, and control how much I'm pressing. See how I can blend that green back into that pink, just like this. That's what I'm doing. I like that green pink mix. Interesting, it made sort of a grayish color. Did I add satin paint? No, but I did add a medium. This is P3, uh, you can use any medium. Um, this is basically a mixing medium. Um, acryl it's acrylic medium, that's basically all it is. And that makes it satin. Melanie says, going further, scenery, scenery workshop in the Netherlands. Oh, wait, I missed something. Element Games still ships. You're in England? Let's see. I'm trying to think who I know in England sells paint. Try. What's the name of that company that sells those paints that are really similar to um, the old school GW ones? They're in England. Oh my gosh. Every year metal just started selling paints too. Somebody knows the name of this, this, this paint from England. It's just like the old school GWs. It comes in the small pots. Miniature Hero sells Reaper paints and they're in the UK. And they might still ship, okay. Coat to Arms. Coat to Arms sells paints that are just like the old school GW paints. And I'm pretty positive they are in um, the UK, so you can check that out. So we need we need more orangey color in the shadows now. We've got that green. We've got to cancel that out now with this sienna. And see how I'm feathering it back so I can blend it. And that sienna is blending like a green. Beautiful. Give me nice, warm shadows. I'm gonna need to add some brown in here in a minute. See, now I, I get that water and I feather that out. My watercolor background coming out. Okay, let's find some more in the shadows and a little bit of green, that black green in there. So the green and the sienna, they, let's mix those together and get a whole new color. Let's, let me just show you what happens. 
You just persuaded the missus to give me her old SMs. So you can sit down and repaint them. Oh, that's cool. Ha ha ha. So, Inequity Graphics is looking specifically for GW paints. You are going to have to try some of the different game stores, probably. Looking for Yoshi's Minis Everywhere is pretty much out. Okay. Interesting. What about eBay? Can you, can you look on eBay? Is there anybody in the UK possibly selling? I'm mixing this Anna with this green. And we're going to get this beautiful chocolate color right there. If we mix more sienna, it'll get more reddish. See, it goes more reddish. If we mix more green, it's going to get more umber. But I love that color. That's that's going to go in the deep shadows. That back in here. A little bit more sienna. Beautiful. All right, give me a second. I'm laying in these colors. Since this is a commission, I will be taking a little extra time on this and not rushing it as much as I would if it was just a regular old stream of something for me. I'm going to take this brown and I'm going to dark line against her, her outfit here. And there's a giant cat hair on my model, always. Lamunus knows that he gets free cat hair when he, when he gets any models from me. All right, so that, that line is really thick. So what we're gonna do is take the in tone color and just thin it out, feather it in. Try to get really close up to that line without erasing it so that it's not gold. Pretty sure cat hair magnetically attracted to paint. It is science. Yes, I agree. That's so funny. So I added a little bit of that sienna to the to the skin here and got a little bit more of a warmer tone now. Very she's got a very yellowy olive skin tone so far, and that's okay. Working for me. Get her collarbones. Of course, that and the tendons in her neck are going to be a little bit more highlighted. Okay. I feel like that's in a good place. Could probably, if actually go a smidge lighter. I'm going to add just a little bit more of this ivory in here and a little medium because it is
starting at the brightest spot and then feathering out so that it gets lighter as we go. And then I dip my brush, blot it, and then feather again all of the brush strokes as I blend those. When I'm doing skin tone, there's a lot of little, little brush strokey blendingness happening. I need to go back in here with my brown and smooth it out. Sometimes if you add a little bit of that dark color back in, it can get rid of the chalkiness in the brush stroke. And you just have to work it back and forth until you get it to the right level of um, pigmentation. There we go. Let it dry too, because you can also work a hole into it. Starting to feel a lot like this, isn't it? <laughs> All right, so we're going to keep going. That bright, beautiful highlight. And then I'm going to pull it up here again. Do this on the face. Um, so. I guess there is black. I do need I want to use black. I'm going to try this dark neutral gray first before I use a black. And no, I lied. I'm going to use this Reaper Masters black indigo if I instead of black. I don't want to actually put black on my on my palette because this is maybe maybe when we get to the swan, we'll see. This is a dark purple. It's so dark that it reads as black and often you get a better effect. And I'm going to go ahead and fill in her whole eyeball socket. This is how I paint eyes. A little crazy for a minute. And I flip it a little bit or turn it. Your socket. All right, that's good. And then take a little bit of my Sienna Brown mix and I'm gonna go in, cause the whole eye socket is gonna be shadowed, right? The whole eyelid and eye socket, eyelid. This, this side's even darker because of the extra piece of hair over her eye. have that in there we can work on the eyeballs which I'm gonna take a little bit of this pink and a little bit of this blue and mix them together and it's gonna give me sort of a weird bluey purpley off-white color more pink says, I just want to say this has been very interesting to watch how you've approached the skin. I would have grabbed the airbrush and zenithal the skin tones and then started to add the visual interest and contrast. So when you say that, Claptraps, does that mean that's just what you would have done or do you think I should have done it or you're just interested in how, because like there are so many ways to approach this and I just decided I'm going to approach this with the hand brush. Oh, that's how you would have approached it. Oh, okay. So, and I, I, I was, I actually thought I was going to do the airbrush as well, but 
I know that sometimes I get a better effect from the hand painted with skin. All right, so notice how I leave a little bit of a, a an edge for that black. So the black is still there. Right, it's all around the edge of her eye. And I use this off off-white pinky blue color for her eyeball. Flip her upside down so I can get this side better. There's a hair. One thing I encourage people to do is don't do things the same way all the time that you've always done it just because it works. Challenge yourself to try different things. Challenge yourself to paint in a new technique because there's a million approaches to doing everything, right? And you won't learn unless you challenge yourself. You won't learn new things if you don't challenge yourself. All right, so that's good. And then I'm gonna take some of this a little bit of a little bit of this brighter ivory with this and only in the center of the eyeball because this is a this is a volume it's a tiny volume it's not flat so we need to create that highlight in the eyeball it's rounded give it a little highlight in the middle and it should fade out on the sides with that dark color right not only that Take this little bit of blue. I'm gonna take a little bit of this blue gray and underneath her top eyelid, just a little bit, I'm gonna give it a little drop shadow because guess what? The top eyelid causes a shadow. I want it to be very slight, very slight. And it can even be a glaze because it, should, it shouldn't overpower the eye at all. You should barely be able to detect it. But even that, even though you can barely detect it, it's still there. And it will help enhance the realism of the model. Flip this again. Now I don't have enough paint on my brush and it's too thin. Getting disgusted with my paint. Here we go. All right, that's a little better. I can always fix it with my little blue mix. All of your rubble brush. All of my brushes have rubble hairs too. Ardered, awesome Ekuni graphics. I'm glad to hear that. Hi, Stephen Hugh. Good morning. Alex Kingle says, I just deal with the messed up brushes I use. Eventually I'll get new ones when this company completely disintegrates. Do you ever, um, sometimes what I'll do, uh, Alex, is I'll cut, I'll cut a brush off when it starts to really die on me. And I'll like make my own like mini stippling and dry brush, brush, dry brush, brush. Ah! Oh, I messed this up. I need to give it. There, that's perfect. Got my little blue, perfect little blue dry, dry, drop shadow on my eyeball. Okay. Now, what else do you have on your eye? Check it out. This little pink blob right there. Does anybody know what that's called? I know that um, I have a few people who are like anatomy wizards. You always fudge up the right eye. Flip it upside down, Mark. So I always mess up the left eye because I'm right-handed. The right eye, I always do great. Whatever eye, whatever eye that you are good at. Like I'm always good at this eye because I'm right-handed. So then I flip it upside down and I'll paint the other eye. 
Snip the weird hair, hairs off. Carnival. Oh my gosh. Indie cross painters. That is exactly what it is. I'm touching my eye. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I used to wear contact lenses, Zab. <laughs> I know people have eye things. They have eye phobias. The red bit is called the carnacle. So I'm going to take just the smallest amount of this little pink. I need to desaturate it a little bit. With some of this blue color. So that's and I'm just going to go in the little corner of her eye and a little bit on her lower, her waterline. It's called a waterline. It's lower, lower part right here. There's a little waterline. You go, uh, who is it? Julio Cabos taught me to do this part. There we go. All right, now her eyes. Mm, I'm gonna use the black, the dark black purple color here. She, what is she looking at? She's looking at birds that are on her hand. So we need to change the direction. That's perfect. Right now, I'm just kind of gonna, I'm not gonna try to finish her eyes. I'm just gonna try to put them in where I think she'll be looking. She'll be looking up there. And then I wanna turn her upside down and look at her eyes and see if they look correct because your, your brain will be able to read whether or not you got it right or not. And those look Those look even. I'm just going to make them both completely black. Yeah, she looks like Aubrey Plaza. Doesn't she look like Aubrey Plaza? You guys know who she is? All right, that looks good nose does have some kind of stuff on it I'm to work on you do not it does look like Aubrey Plaza look up Aubrey Plaza she also reminds me of a British actor who I freaking love what's her name um, she was in Game of was well, she was in Game of Thrones and she was also in crap she was in uh, the Tudors. She was Anne Boleyn. Anne Boleyn, actress. Natalie Dormer. Freaking love Natalie Dormer. That's who she looks like a little bit. We love her. On images. We're gonna we're gonna totally paint her to look like Natalie. Not a good picture of her. Wait, oh no, I... Here, I'll show you a picture. She has a, I think she has the smirk on the wrong side. But look, that is freaking Natalie Dormer. Am I right or am I right? Right? You should watch a show called The Tudors. It's a spoof on the Tudors with gas. <laughs> Charlize Theron, no, I disagree. Look at that. Hold on, I'll look. Charlize. Maybe, maybe. I think Charlize looks too old for this. Isn't Charlize from South Africa? No, I don't think it works. I don't think it looks like her. I know. Natalie. Oh my gosh, don't tell her that she's from South Africa. Yeah, <laughs> don't tell who. 
Don't tell her that she's sold. <laughs> yeah, she's, I mean, so, now don't get me wrong. I like Charlize, but I'm a big Natalie fan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she's, she's younger than me. Hold on. She's younger than me. Wait. I'll find out how old is she is. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. There we go. She's 44. She's four, she's four years younger than me. So, yeah, no, she's not old at all. <laughs> um, let me see what she looked like at age 20, though. Let's see if she looked more like this character. Yeah, I could see that. Hold on. Yeah, when she was 20, absolutely. Look at that. There we go. It's. I still say Natalie is closer. Good morning, Light and Passion. How are you? Okay. Let me find, I just have to show you guys Aubrey Plaza because I also think she looks like Aubrey Plaza. And I don't know if you knew this, but I actually can paint an, an, a likeness onto um, a figure if I really want to. Am I right or am I right? Right? I think it, I think they, they look similar. You're awake. Where are you from, Light and Passion, if I may ask? All right, so what's next? Um, I'm gonna do some skin tones on the face. <laughs> it's okay, you can be wrong, it's cool. <laughs> I don't mind. All right, I'm gonna mix that in there. A little bit more ivory. Go. More ivory, there we go. Okay, I've got a color now. See how this goes. Start with the nose, because that is usually the brightest highlight on the face. A little bit more sienna, sienna. Sienna makes it more warm. I'm letting my brush kind of feather out and fan out because it makes it a little bit easier. Good, I think. I'm shading down first. That's my approach. This is a watercolor style, absolutely, to do this kind of shading down kind of thing. Blend. A little bit, it's a little bit. I don't want that harsh shadow. You cannot have harsh shadows on a woman's face without them looking either A, old, or B, mannish. Don't put harsh shadows on a woman's face. I don't care if you like that high contrast look. It's not nice. Especially a young woman, you definitely don't want harsh shadows. So, 
Thin that shit out. Aubrey's are the best, just saying. <laughs> oh, Audrey's are the best. <laughs> Lick the weasel. <laughs> Where the birds chaos spawn? I haven't put the birds on because I didn't know yet. I didn't want to because there's a lot of stuff I have to paint, uh, you know, underneath. What if it's noir? Eh. You're still going to risk having um, things dangerously sharp for a woman's face if you... I mean, you can go ahead and try, but it's going to be... You have harsh shadows. There's still ways to blend them so that you don't um, so they don't don't look so you know like this. This is better. Obviously, time, place, and manner for everything, right? Okay, we've got kind of pasty stuff going on right now. I'm going to get my freaking medium. See if I can smooth out this a little bit. I've got some brush strokes I'm not happy with. Very yellowy tone of skin at the moment. There we go. need more a little bit more warm so I'm gonna go in with my sienna here sides of her face near her hair to create that depth and I need that pink we'll use the we'll use this pink and mix it a little bit with the sienna I'm going to thin this out a lot. I used to be scared to put pink. Oh, see, we've got that medium on there, so. And a cat here. Down here. happens when I mix sienna with the pink I get a, like a mauve color that's very pretty it warms it up just a tiny bit I can't remember the name of the actress but it looks like you'll send me a picture on Twitter okay you must be a young spring air instead of an old <laughs> bitter winter air exactly chaos Benny but if yeah if you don't want a, a woman to look young go ahead put Put those wrinkles in them and those shadows. That'll be fine. There's that pink. Look at how much more alive now she's become. That's pretty. Hmm, there we go. Come on her chin. Hmm. Now I'm just putting some of that pink into some of the other areas. We need it. That life essence because she's feeling kind of chalky kind of yellowy we need to get this pink. Mm. 
medium. Medium, so whenever I'm using those light colors, a little medium is gonna help move things a little bit. Got that really harsh, dark shadow, and I'm gonna get rid of that. She's gonna look a lot younger. Get rid of that dark shadow on her side of her nose. That's better. It's it's looking rough. Trust me, it's looking rough, but it's coming together, even though you you can't see it yet. It, it will look good. Um, I need a little bit of this gray blue. Gray blue will cool things down in some spots, and it might counteract some of that yellow. I need things to dry. I need things to dry. I'm going to add some of this pink, pinky purple color. Part of why I'm adding the, the pink and the purple is to counteract the yellow because really jaundice looking at this moment. And if I'm, if I do this in soft layers, the pink will mix with your eye and will get um, a more flesh tone color. Does that make sense? Uh, you know what I know what else is missing? Is her lips, her lip color. We're gonna take that, this color here. Change everything. A little bit pink. I'm gonna add a little bit of this brown to it. Make it a little bit more natural. There we go. Still looking weird to me. Now I put a little bit of that sienna. Is that pink? And that has enough of that orange in it that we bring it back to a flesh tone color. Right? Doesn't look quite as crazy. Shadows are still kind of harsh, so I'm glazing that same color back over her shadows. Hi, Mikolas. How are you doing? Hi, Bill Robertson. Looks amazing. You make it look so easy, but I know it's not. All right, you messaged me a picture of Charlize. Okay, I'm going to look. Where did you, did you message it on, twi on Twitch? Let me see. Yes. All right, I'm going to check. Facebook? Okay, I'll check on Facebook. Okay. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, a little bit. 
This is a highly photoshopped picture. A little bit. I see it a little bit. <laughs> you think it's funny? <laughs> it's pretty shopped, yes. Hi, Brubaka. Are you going for a sheer material on her robe? I think I will. I have to I have to get the skin tone down before I can decide for sure. They're still in uh, issues with her skin here. I need this brighter brighter yellow ivory. Oh yeah, there we go. This is that pale yellow that we had, that we just got. I kind of like that she's already kind of looking like a renaissance painting or some kind. She looks like a canvas painting, which is what I'm going for. I want her to, yeah. Okay, there. Boom. I feel like I got it. What do you think? Well, it maybe needs a little bit more. A bit more. Okay, we need to do the hair and I need to smooth out some of that. A little medium. Looking like this though, right? The colors looking like that. I'm going to use a little bit of this yellow over here. And I've got that lovely medium in there. Otherwise, I would probably be screaming at the chalkiness. Medium is for blending. I need to bring back that pink. Hang on. Balance. Balance is between the pinks. I'm going to put a little bit of this cool turquoise on the side of her face here right here. It's going to look weird for a second, but I'm going to glaze it in. Oof, not like that. Mix it with this in tone color. Ah, there we go. Better. No, it's too dark. Hmm. I messed it up. Sorry, guys. Don't do that. Went back with my sienna. All right, I'm going to leave it for a second. I need to do the hair, which is going to be an ochre. I'm going to start with this dark brown up in here and then highlight it out. 
This is this uh, new color, which is dark golden brown. Which we used a lot on the skin already. And then putting this into the hair wherever there's those shadows. Just base coating at this point. This is a, definitely a model which you probably would do better sub-assembling, but it, it's a little tricky to do that. See how painting that hair in already kind of helped frame the face? Hi, Domedes. Really looking forward to ReaperCon. Do you think there's going to be a ReaperCon? You're jealous of how easy I make it seem? You know, I'm, I'm not... If, if I'm making it seem easy, I appreciate that. But right now, I'm actually... I'm not struggling. But I'm not... This isn't easy for me either. Like, I'm pulling on all of my little portraiture knowledge right now from decades of doing portraiture and you know painting people from life so that's maybe why you're feeling like it's easy I have decades of this but I'm also this is all I'm pulling out of my head and I do have a reference with me and so I am kind of using the reference a little bit which I highly recommend that you do as well. You know, don't think for a second that we artists have to make all these colors and these, you know, these things up out of our heads. Some people are just that talented, but I, I have to have references. I have to have ideas that I kind of steal and appropriate. And don't feel bad for a second for doing that. Just, just know that if you copy something pretty directly, whether that be a box art or whatever, just because you painted that box art that you copied, just because you painted somebody, give somebody credit that they came up with all the colors and everything, right? Whoever came up with the colors for this, I need to credit. I don't have a name. It was the... Uh, Somebody knows, I can't remember who was it, Painting Cricks found that for me. But uh, that artist, now I need a credit for helping me come up with those colors. And maybe they got it from somebody else. And yes, all art is derivative. Steal like an artist, where you credit those you know, who came before you. There's a book out there called Steal Like an Artist, and I highly recommend you get it. It's really, really good. I believe in copyright karma, too, so copy a box art. Credit the box artist. Okay, now I want to mess with their eyes because I feel like we need to do something else up here. I'm going to flip this upside down so they look... Even she looks a little scared.
There we go. There we go. That looks so much better. Hmm. And Chris is gonna go. Oh, oh, thank you, Mark Goodwin. Hair will hopefully make her face look more lively with all the gray around it. It's weird. Yeah, I, do, I agree. Howdy, Lady Mur Lazy Murmur Murmurer Murmurer. <laughs> Great looking mini to paint there. Thank you. Yeah, if you're subscribed, I'll track you down. But if you're not, you have to be present. Light and Passion says, that's always gets me watching experienced painters. When you see them place colors and the paint just seems to blend itself. Oh my gosh, Chris Frozen. Thank you so much for that raid. You're awesome. Chris Frozen, we raided him yesterday. Or was it, was it yesterday or was it the day before? I can't remember. But painting the air. He's this awesome model. Just based off Alita and the Swan from um, from Zeus, you know, Zeus is the swan that got with the uh, the chick who's Lita. Hold on a second, I'm gonna give uh, Chris Frozen a little shout out. Be right there. Let's... My keyboard. And I can never find anything when I need it. How are you, Chris? How was your stream? Did you have a good one? I lost my keyboard. There it is. I think that's how I spell it. Let me just check. F-R-O-S-I-N. I got it. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, defend, defend. Hello. So we're, we're working on this model right here. We're also doing a giveaway for my followers. We're giving away a model from Creature Caster. So that is going on right now. If you, if anyone here is a follower and wants to... <laughs> yeah, thank you, Shoshi Bot, exactly. <laughs> so, so yeah, feel free to join in on the raffle if you're a follower. That chin will stop armies. Yeah, she does have a strong chin, doesn't she? I need to work on it. Stop armies. I sanded a little bit of her chin off, so I'm actually trying to make it stronger so that way you don't see the part that I buffed off by accident. You know what's interesting is she kind of has a little bit of Asian features. I don't know. Maybe it's the face shape. You just see it ever so slightly. Her, she's still looking. So I think I'm not used to this yellow skin tone. This is the artwork that we're using for our color palette. Maybe once I get some of them greens and them turquoises in there, it will look better. So I'm going to start with this, this beautiful color here. This is our, might make her skin look less yellow, having yellow around her face. It actually is working. Isn't that funny how that, how things work like that? that yellow around her face is actually making her skin look less yellow. Probably because it's pulling out all the peaches and all of the other colors. This is one of my, this is a commission that I'm doing for Lamunas here. He's one of my moderators. So 
So I'm taking a little bit more time to get a paint, see me paint a little slower than I would if I were painting a regular stream because regular streams I kind of speed paint everything. I'm, I'm slow painting this one. That's already better a lot. Enjoy your lurk work. <laughs> no problem. Her skin is a bit more pastel and slightly less pink than the references, right? The ref, yeah, the references are very white. There's a lot of white. And so I, I kept it a bit more pastel and slightly less pink. Yeah, definitely. Let's see, I'm gonna add some of my Sienna back. And give her face a little more color. I'm just glazing this over it. That's helping. Now she doesn't look so sallow. Much, much, much better. Okay, I do want to do something with her eyes. She needs like a bit of makeup or something. I'm going to use this blue on her eyelids and see what happens. And if I... Not bad. Blue is nice. The dark gray blue. That's pretty actually like that. I'm going to put some of that gray blue down in here. In the shadow. And some of it in here. Love it. Oh yeah, yeah. It needs that blue. Yes. I have that song and I don't know why. That song like um it's an old 80s song. Now you've given me, given me nothing but shattered dreams, shattered dreams. Feel like I could run away, run away from the empty heart. There we go. That blue did it, didn't it? Weird. Color theory is so weird. It, the blue just did something. They may know the name of that song so I can look it up later and listen to it. Oh, so pretty. Color theory is magic. Yes, it is. Shattered dreams. <laughs> What's the, who sings that song? Who sings it? Memnor, thank you for subscribing. Yeah, I am nowhere close to the skin tones, Millennia. Don't judge my skin tones until you see them finished. Johnny hates jazz. Thank you for that. I love it. Do you know where, are they, are they British? <laughs> you guys are great. Memnor. Thank you for subbing. From the UK, yes. <laughs> no wonder. All right, let's take a second, because this has been intense. So we've been working on this for about an hour. I think let's take a look at what the um, what the bot is saying if our if is our is our giveaway over yet 
second. I'm gonna look. Millennia, oh, judging, not really at all. I'm just really checking on how well I can see. I understand things, cool. Not yet, let's see. How many, how much longer do we have for the giveaway? We have 11 minutes, 11 minutes. By the way, we have 33 people entered, which is pretty good odds, 56 tickets. So we got a lot of subscribers. You get two tickets if you're a subscriber, you know? And yeah, we're giving away the Slaughter King, the Slaughter Lord, the Lord of Slaughter. That's what it's called. All right, I'm gonna take a little stretch. 32 people more than you. Oh, did you not enter? You're getting the prize of the of the model, right? All right, let's stretch. Some chiropractor's probably watching my show and going, what the heck are you doing, Shoshi? Don't stretch like that. Oh, that felt good. Oh, get out of gecko? Okay, we can do that. Of my little babies. Let's go look at the baby. I think we, we got out peppercorn last time, right? They were both in the tube last time I checked. Mm, looks like ginger biscuits still in the tube. Where is peppercorn? There's peppercorn. Oh, she's so cute. Little baby. It seems like she's in a better mood. Yeah, she's in a better mood. Baby. Of course, she's always got a flop half out of my hand. Can you give us a blip? A blip? Yeah. <laughs> I never would have thought that the, the geckos would become the, the, uh, the mascots for the show. Look at this chunky tail, it's getting all nice and fat. Can you see how her, her coloring is starting to deepen a little bit? I think she's going to shed a little bit in, a, in a, maybe in a week or so. Maybe sooner. She's got such a nice tail. Such a nice tail. Hi, little girly. <laughs> there we go. That is a good lighting right there. And walk around. You got a cat hair on you. Get that off of you. I don't like. Sometimes the cat, the geckos will get cat hairs. Like, in the, and you, I'll find one in their mouth, and I'll have to pull it out because. Uh, they lick everything. They put their mouths on everything. Because that's how they smell or something. That's how they sense things. Do you like a little... I'm going to back off. So when I first got her, part of the reason why I bonded with her is because if I, if I like look at her and I do this slow cat blink at her and do it real slow, just like a cat, kind of. She will blink back at me, and it's really cute. What are you doing? You want to go back in your cage? All right, you stay on my hand. Ready. <laughs> Aw, thank you for subscribing, Indie Cross Painter. This is one of our gecko mascots. This is Peppercorn. She is an African fat tail gecko, and we also have Ginger Biscuit. She's a biscuit. Come on, leave me alone. Yeah, she wants to be left alone. She does. All right, I'll put her back. Go back in there. Got a little cork bark. Go back in there. <laughs> I ran out of crickets, but thankfully I've got plenty of dubia roaches for them. Let's write down the name. We got a new subscriber. Let's get some hype to Indie Cross Painter. There we go. Thank you so much. 
for subscribing. If cat hairs are attached to paint and geckos are attracted to cat hairs, are geckos made out of paint? Mmm, that's a good question. <laughs> that's pretty funny. All right. Ready to paint some more. I want to do something with her eyes. I think I want to give her blue eyes. Um, uh, I'm also going to go ahead with this dark... Whoa, there's a, that's a me hair. Nope. I'm gonna use this dark black purple. I already had it. And I'm gonna give her a little color for eyelash a little bit here. I'm gonna use the turquoise because it's nice and bright for her eyes. Side of that ring pretty bright I'm gonna use a little bit of this light blue on top of it and see what happens nice tones down that turquoise a little bit Kind of draws your eye in too with that blue. I'm gonna use this dark color here Go around the edge of that a little bit more, especially at the top because of the shadow. Now I'm gonna paint in that pupil. No offense to blue-eyed people, but sometimes your eyes look weird because you can like, I mean, like little zombie people. Just because of that. My dad had blue eyes. So I have the recessive trait for blue eyes. I did not get them. Good. Okay, that's looking good. Now we do need to have a little bright white spot highlight that are in the eyes. And remember, this is an eyeball, it's round. That dot needs to be in the same spot for both of those eyes. Look at that, she just came alive, didn't she? Boom. Gonna give a little bit of a highlight here on the side of her sclera. Barely gonna be able to see it. I like it. Gosh, her face looks tasty, doesn't it? Cuter and cuter. <laughs> Boom. Left-handed and blue-eyed. Whoa. So my husband is blue eye. You guys are all blue eyed. <laughs> Good thing I'm a blue and brown. Good thing I'm a blue and brown eyed people. Not weird looking then. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. Giving a little bit more pink up here. Messed that up. These paints are a little bit matte, so I'm not used to painting much skin tones with these because they're matte. There's something, something off. 
I'm not sure what it is. I think maybe... There needs to be like more shadows. I'm not sure that blue really helped. Do a little black. Urf. He is getting cuter and cuter though. These corner dimples of her mouth are usually are the darkest parts of the face. And then right for two. I want to just show you the difference of something here. Hold on. Look at how smooth one is over the other. But I guess she's looking cute. I'm being too harsh on myself, aren't I? Would you mind if I did a quick advert for the Valkyrie server in the chat here? Yeah, no, that's fine, uh, Foxfire. Make sure you let people know who can and can't be in the server, because it is a gated community. So let me do a little, let me, let me actually do a little intro about it. So there's a, a new Discord that just recently popped up. It is um, all women friendly. So all trans, but non-binary regular women that have born women everybody is a welcome um and it is a really really nice server i really enjoyed being there oh we just finished the raffle anyway it's called the valkyrie server you can go ahead and uh i guess if you if there's a link to it yeah women says trans non-binary gender fluid <laughs> um you want to post a link to the server you can i don't know You'd have to give that link to uh, one of my mods, which um, it looks like who's on right now. Lamunus is still here, so you can post to Lamunus. We're gonna we're gonna do this raffle right now because it is. One second. Oh, drop the Twitter. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, all but cis men, <laughs> and and no uh, no trans men either. So no offense, because <laughs> I have a friend who's a trans man, and he's he's. They're like, no, sorry. <laughs> but Foxfire says there is an alley. There is an alley section, so you you can still join. So there is a place. It's just the bulk of the server is is uh, for women and non-binary. Okay, giveaways. It's time. We're gonna pick the winner. Are you guys ready? 37 people have entered. This is your last chance. Actually, it's too late to enter. I'm just gonna pick Robosh76. Yay, Robosh. Are you here, Robosh? Robosh is a, I am, um, huzzah. <laughs> Robosh, say something in chat if you're here. I, I really don't like to have to track people down. But I know where I can get a hold of Robosh at least. All right, Ro Robosh, are you here? I don't think he's here. I might pick, a, I might pick again, because I really don't want to have to track people down. I'm gonna give him a little bit longer. Because it does say that you got to be present to win. Does anybody see him in chat? You vote pick again, lol? Yeah. <laughs> you're present. If you're present, you win. You no, know, you're not if you're present, you win. You, you win, you have to be present. <laughs> That's cute, Millennia. All right, I'm sorry, I'm Ravash. I might talk to him later and see if he wants a, a paint holder or something. But I'm going to pick someone again, okay? We're going to pick another winner. Lando! Lar Lando the Arch Magi! I'm pretty sure you're here. Yay! Woot! You got the model! You got to send me your info so I can send this to you. There we go. Lando is here. <laughs> Oh, 
Yeah, I'm going to write your name down so that I don't forget who won. Lando. The Arch Magi. All right, contact me. I'm going to get your info from you. And we'll go ahead and uh, ship you a model while I'm still able to ship. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Good. Don't forget... We are doing another giveaway of the paints, the new paints. I've got a whole box of the new paints from um, the new set of three, ones I've been using today, um, from Creature Caster. So if you're a subscriber, come back on the 16th and we'll be doing another giveaway then. Also, what it is Whip Friday, so make sure to put your whips, your wor works in progress. Did Lando win before? Lando, did you win before? remember if you won before. The thing is, is I usually have it so that if, if you win multiple times, you win multiple times. It's how it works on my stream. Sorry if that upsets anybody, but I let the bot pick, so I don't I don't choose. The bot is like you want you want elsewhere. Oh <laughs> Alright, well it wouldn't matter anyway because even if you won before on my stream you'd still win again. That's how that's how that's how it works here. He just has some luck. All right, now, Whip Friday. Do exclamation point whip trips in, here, I'll do it. Yeah, lucky duck. <laughs> mm, everybody who wants to take part in whip trips, you do not have to post a mini. You can post a picture of your cat. You can post a picture of your sewing, your picture of your gardening. You can post a picture of your cooking. Anything that you want to share with the chat, I would love to see anything you've been doing as a hobby. Whip trips. Do this. There we go. Go and tell or get CNC on your latest creative endeavor. Post the photo in the live image gallery on the Discord today. You just bought even more plastic crack earlier. Yes, so much to do. Good. Now I want to see you painting this uh, Lord of. Slaughter, Lord of Slaughter. So go ahead and post in that link. I want to make sure that a lot of people are joining in on that. And then we're going to work some more on this one. I'm just going to work a, like for another 15 minutes on this model. Go, oh, she's really like looking better now, doesn't she? The flat paint is bugging me. I'm going to switch switch gears and try some satin paint. This is the moon ray. Blaze it a little bit. Let's see what happens. About the same color. I just can't, I just can't, there's something about me, I can't deal with a, a flat paint on a face. Seems to be a slightly better. Might be getting too many layers on now. Hmm, Sienna and this color. She doesn't have any eyebrows. That's another thing I noticed.
feels a little better. Doesn't feel as chalky as before. Okay, I'm gonna leave that alone a little bit. Yay! Yay! Thank you for following, Pistafa. Thank you. I did. I did. What did I do? Wait. What did I miss? Robosh, you won, but you know what? You weren't present, so I had to skip you. But tell you what, you know what? I'm just going to be really nice right now. Robosh, how much do you like me? Because I think I will go ahead and give you the Lord of Malice. So Robosh, contact me. I will send you the Lord of Malice. I'll send the Lord of Slaughter to uh, Lando and... Oh, your computer crashed. Well, you're in luck. I have another model, so you you got lucky. <laughs> so send me your info. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Robosh. Robosh's computer crashed because the luck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's do some hype. <laughs> I, I'm like I'm like what? Is, who is it? Like Rosie O'Donnell on her show? She couldn't stand to have anybody lose. So she'd always give away somebody else stuff, even if they like got the answers to a quiz wrong or something. <laughs> I'm like that. Everybody wins something, right? If I could, you everybody here would. No, Nixton, that's gonna be for auction. <laughs> oh, thank you. I just I just happened to have two models. That was the other thing. It's just easier. Hopefully one of you lives in the United States, so I don't have to do international shipping for both of you because that will be tricky. Good, Lando does, perfect. It's only like $10 to ship in the United States. It's okay, Robosh, we got you. It's going to you, just message me. UK is fine. It'll probably be like, it's usually like 15 to 20, depending on what kind of box I can find. If I can find a small box and kind of take it out of the packaging and put it in a, in a small box. It's all by volume outside the United States. All right, are we ready to do some whip trips? Let's do some whip trips because I think Lita needs a break. This model, the approach to this model has been very different. And she is still really yellow. I might have to do a little like airbrush on her and then repaint her eyes. So yellow. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. You're so kind. You were just jesting. <laughs> and we're going to, we're going to, yeah, we're going to auction the twins once I finish painting it. So. Everyone will have a chance to bid on it if they want. All right, let's take a look. Yeah, you're okay with Lando the Archmage winning? Good, I'm glad you approve, Lamunas. Let's go to Whip Trips. I'm gonna go ahead and switch, switch gears here. We're gonna go to the Discord. I have a little hiccup right now. And make sure you put you put pictures in there. If you haven't already, go do it now. Because um, by the time I get to you, it'll, it'll be your turn. And so let's here. Live image gallery. There it is. All right. We're going to roll. Okay. okay. A lot of really nice things in here. Looks like we were the last ones to do a whip, so here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and open these links, and then we'll go ahead and get started and looking at everything. He knows, guy has. Been, oh, you've worked so hard on this, Frick. Looks amazing. So. 
we'll be looking at these all in a minute here. I've got to um, get all these photos in my browser so I can share them. If I start losing frames, it's because I got too open in the browser. Okay. Start here. This first first couple models is from Mark, Mark Goodwin. So I gotta do, sh I gotta share now. There you go. All right, here we go. We've got a Sigmarine. Is that right? A Sigmarine? And it looks really good. Very close up picture. There's another one. And good. Job, Mark. This is Frerk Dino, and Frerk uh, has been working on this diorama for quite some time, and he kind of figured it all out with some cardboard to begin with, and then slowly been adding the paint now. Easy. Look at this. So these, I think these are, oh my God, I can't remember the name of these aliens. They're coming out of the, coming out of the chimney, they're bursting through the floor. All these things are, are attacking. And there is a lone fighter at the top of a trash heap getting ready to um, attack them. Oh, look at this. That is crazy. Xeno invasion. I can't remember what, what was the name of the, oh, there's his head. His head is missing. Still painting it. Really cool. Somebody knows the name of those creatures. Tyranids? Are they Tyranids? Yeah, Tyranids. Full diorama. One model night quester. Ah, okay. Get a look at your whips. Exactly. Oh my gosh. Thank you for tipping, Jamie. I appreciate that. It helps out a lot. Hi, Bug King. Focus. Uh, Bug King, the focus is because of the photo that that um, that Frag took, so it's it has nothing to do with my end. So there's nothing. Oh, <laughs> I was gonna say, <laughs> I was gonna say I can't do anything about that. <laughs> He's modding a couple channels. There we go. There's another photo. And the bricks. Oh, amazing! Did you stick each one of those? You did. I love it. All right, hold on a second. I'm gonna load up some more photos. Give me one minute. That's, those are looking really good, by the way. Oh, wow. Okay, and then Frick also has some Kingdom Death stuff. So I'm gonna open these up. These are beautiful, beautiful. All right, take a look at these. These are um, Kingdom Death models that Frick painted and we all know what a big Kingdom of Death fan I am. So he says, besides my diorama, I finally painted my starting survivors from the Kingdom of Death core game. Oh, I forgot the description about my diorama. So I finally painted the diorama itself and gave some weathering, but at this step, I stop, and I want to paint the miniatures before I add more vegetation. That makes sense. So I really like the ambience that you've got on your different figures here. Yeah, they are nice. Oh, you were trying to get my attention? What was I what was I doing? Oh, you're just trying to get my attention. I get it. Okay. From Dragon Gaze, that prey is too easy for you and Drake Slayers. Ah. These are beautiful. Okay. So let me hold on one second. We're gonna close those windows and we're gonna look at some more whips. Whip Friday. I don't wanna have too many pictures open, otherwise we get frame rate issues. Um, also, guess what? They put down um, flags in my lawn yesterday because they're gonna we're gonna be getting fiber off the cable in my in my subdivision, which is really awesome. I have no idea yet. 
if the speed upload speed is going to be high enough to stream with but I really hope so because that would make it awesome much better than what I currently have hopefully all right so the next one is unexpected and then Jorah sat on one second wow Jorah you've come so far with this model since you started it you guys are all working really a lot I can tell you've been spending a lot of time painting because everybody's stuff has come a lot oh spear thank you for posting those hot grass buns oh my gosh I can't wait to show you guys this hold on I'm so excited <gasps> okay we're gonna show off show off this uh, king of death um, Easter Aya, I think that's who it is. Easter Aya, and pun expected, painted this. Finished it yesterday, C and C, welcome. Going to do the next 50 millimeter one next. Okay, so this is the little one. Hold on a second here, I'm gonna show everybody. All right, this is Easter Aya from Kingdom Death. And let's see, do you want, if you want some C and C, let me take a look here. Good, okay. So, what I might do, if this were mine, is maybe do a little dark lining. So, that might be the only thing I would really do, except for there's something about her face. Um, let's see if I can go to the next picture. The, the carrot is perfect. Carrot, don't touch the carrot. You see this orange that you've got um, on the carrot. I might put a little bit of that on the things around her face just to draw your eye back up to the face. And I would also maybe put her. I feel like that the hair is really shiny compared to the rest of the model. That makes sense because hair is shiny. But it might be overpowering. It's a little, almost looks like it's plasticky. This is such a cute model. That is perfect back here. Oh, back. So anywhere between, like where an, a new type of material is gonna like touch itself, right? Touch, touch. So you've got skin here and you've got the um, wrist, wrist here. So right between those two, you're gonna have um, maybe a dark line, right? Let me show you real quick um, what I'm talking about. So, oops, Mike. So for instance, if this were a small model, since it's a big model, you don't dark line nearly as much, but on small models, it really looks good. So like there's, there's material here and there's skin here. So I might come in with my dark line And just separate everything out and you'll see what a difference it makes to having everything right there's that line in between that arm and a little bit of a darker color Right? That's what I'm talking about, dark lining. Just that little drop shadow. And it really does make a difference. Actually, it makes a difference on the big models too. Now that I'm doing it on this one. Okay. That. and it's just going to pop everything and make it look more especially because Kingdom Death are a little bit um, anime-esque and uh, they can get away with being a little bit more cartoon-like so you know on her wrist where you have it you're going to put that little dark line separating 
separating out those materials. That's what I'm talking about. All right, let's take a look at more stuff. All right, this is, um, this is Jorah's, right? The Jorah says, almost finished. Maybe I should fix a real base. Yeah, yeah, you got a little plastic cup there. Can I help you? Oh, sorry, Mike is, oh, sorry, there we go. This is Jorah's. Didn't mean to do that. Yeah, I love that. It is really pretty. Try some dark link. Use it. Use a dark blue or a dark purple, or something like you know. Like I, I use this as a liner a lot. They actually, um, Reaper makes liners, so you can get gray liner or blue liner or green liner. They have a whole bunch of different colors of liners, and they're specifically made for that kind of thing. All right, Jora, you're doing such a nice job on this. Yeah, I think that you're you're get if you're done with him, you need to get a nice base for him. And Jora, are you in the United States? If you're not, then um, Crazy Wanky is a German-based place you can get a nice plinth from. How beautiful. Really, really nice work. Back and He's really nice. Were there any, any areas of this model that gave you any um, any any problems or any struggles, or did you pretty much just paint it, you know, pretty easily? Non-metallic metal is really nice. Let me show you guys something. Well, you can't really see. If I could do a close-up, you'd be able to see that this the white on this is actually you can it's very visible, not real blended, but that's the thing is. That's what makes it look so reflective, too. I sent you some models the other day. All the model model struggle. Ha ha ha. That's funny. That's right, Joras. I remember that. Yeah, you need to get. You should get a uh, a plinth. Really nice plinth for him. It'll really frame him. All right, who is this one? This one is from Bill Robertson. He says, trying to get extreme shadows and highlights and intense red, and I'm slowly figuring it out. I'll tell you a secret. So Bill, go over this orange, make this orange as, as bright as you want, and then glaze it back with a little bit of red ink or red, something like a red paint, something, glaze it back and you'll be able to get It'll, it'll look like a true red and it'll look really good. Or actually, you can also, instead of the orange, use a, a fluorescent orange and then glaze it. And then it will really, really, really look good. I learned that from Alfonso Giraldes, I think. It was either him or the other Giraldes. It's like Heraldes and Heraldes. There's two different ones. And they do not like to be confused with each other at all. But I think I learned that red from Angel. So let's see what else we have here. There's another angle. It is looking really nice though. What model is this from? Is this a GW model? Oh, there's the hot cross buns. Guys, everybody get hungry now. So these are Spears hot crust buns, far from perfect, but they taste okay. They look like they taste good. And I think hot crust buns are a, are they a Christian European tradition? That I, I don't know what the story with hot crust buns is. I think they're an Easter thing, right? I'm Jewish, I don't really know the history of the buns. Harrisburg Crimson looks awesome on top of any red. That's true. They're Easter bake. Yeah. <laughs> and that, and then that, and that, uh, this guy is an Ogroid. He's an Ogroid Myrmidon. What's that one? There we go. And these are, these are an Easter treat. 
They look amazing. Very tasty. Okay, get some more pictures up. By the way, guys, I love when you post, you know, non, non uh, mini stuff, but uh, you know, just as much. Don't feel, don't feel afraid to show some of your other creative endeavors. But I like to see. England hot cross buns, hot cross buns, one a penny. Yeah, I remember that. One a penny, two a penny, hot cross buns. I used to play that on the piano. Hot cross buns, hot cross buns. Yeah, that's an old one. Your grandma used to make them every year. They're like a spiced raisin sweet bread. Nice. Yeah, it's supposed to be the cross. I knew that, I knew that tall. Okay, let's pull up. We got another mini by Light and Passion, and this is an awesome looking mini. I'm gonna wanna know how you painted that. Tell me if you painted that with an airbrush or with a, with a Pinky the Kaiju. That is faint, fantastic. Then we got Rabbit Turtle Studio. Well, I got way too many things open at the moment. Rabbit Turtle Studio posted this awesome looking skeleton for maybe a Titan? Rumble, Mikolas. That is it. Okay, let's post these last ones and then we'll wrap up the show. Take a look. Airbrush and hairbrush. Nice, hairbrush. You painted with the hairbrush. I have to see that. Okay, so look at this. This is the pink, Pinky the Kaiju by Light, Light, Light and Passion. Right, Light and Passion? Yeah, got it right. He is cute. And is this the 3D printed model or did you buy this? Rawr. Oh my God, he's so cute. Let's see why you call him Pinky. <laughs> That's, that's adorable. And this one belongs to Turtle Rabbit Rabbid Turtle Studio. You don't ever want to get bit by a rabbit turtle because everyone will laugh at you. Look at that. It's definitely a skeleton of a Titan. It looks really good so far. And, and I'm guessing you did an airbrush, a little airbrush work. Good, good to see. This is by Rumble, and he's doing his Twilight Night cloak. But he's this is going to be your your proxy for the Watcher. Is that right? Is that is that what I remember from last week? Your proxy for the Watcher looks really good. And then last but not least is Mikolas, and he says lots of cleanup uh, on the robes, especially N needs to do lots of. Looking good. Let me take a look at that one. I think I saw, I think you had just started this one last week and we were just looking at some other things. Yeah, he's looking good. I like him. He's an Ifrit, right? An Ifrit? A male Ifrit, if I remember right. All right. So that, that brings us to the last of our Whip Trip Gallery pictures. So, yes, male Afridi, that's it. And Rabbit Turtle Studio says, uh, Serratus Knight Archeon from House Orlock. And I probably mispronounced all of those words and I apologize. And Light and Passion did print, print that kaiju, that's cool. A lot more people are getting, especially if you live in Australia, people are getting these 3D printers so they don't have to have stuff ship and it's making their life so much easier. And the 3D printers are getting a lot better too. All right, let's look for somebody to hand off. I'm going to cut my music here. I'm going to start off. We're going to be back on Monday, I hope. I think we're going to be back on Monday. If I'm going to skip a stream any day, it's going to be a Monday stream, but I think I'll be fine. 
Aw, thank you for the for the follow call, Sarian. I appreciate that. Just remember that on the 16th, we're going to do a giveaway. I'm going to be streaming Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 2.30 to 5.30 GMT minus 6. So same time as today. And I have a new subscriber only stream on Thursdays, which I've just been painting anything I like for the fun of it. And it's been real chill and real fun. And you get to find out all of the like behind the scenes stuff that I'm working on before everybody else. So let's go ahead and switch up our end times. Let's see here. Okay. Find somebody to post. Go in a raid. Who do we have? We got Obaka TV again. I think that's, that sounds good. Go ahead and raid Obaka. Well, actually, Obaka's got a lot of people. Let me see if there's anybody else on real quick. I have to, I have to dig around. Sometimes people don't show up. Ah, uh, Nalindi is Studio J. Let's do Studio J. Like him. He might be ending soonish, but he he's gonna be on. Studio J is a lovely, lovely guy. He's usually painting some Warhammer too. Studio. There he is. All right, guys, go ahead and punch that raid button. Join that, join that raid, and then we'll get ready and we'll go ahead and all. Damn, some some emotes and wish mad love from Shoshi's minis. Yeah, thank you guys. We had a good time. It was a good stream. All right, take care, bye.